When you look at this object, I'm guessing your brain is thinking Apple, right? The human brain is so quick to process information, it's almost as if the moment we look at something, we immediately know what it is. But is that how it works? Because when you slow down the process, it's more like a sequence. First, your brain becomes consciously aware that something's in its visual field. You then break down the features, like its color, the shape, and its size. And then we mash that information to something in our memory to label it appropriately. So on the surface, what seems like an instantaneous event is actually more like a chain of events. The visual system is truly, truly amazing. All right, guys, welcome to Psych Explain. In this video, we're gonna talk about the occipital lobe, the brain's visual processing center. Now, the occipital lobe is one of the four major lobes of the cerebral cortex. We can identify that lobe on this structure here. The problem, though, is that it's really hard to identify because there aren't really defined borders or boundaries like we see with the other lobes. For example, if I wanted to know where the frontal lobe is or the parietal lobe is, I can use this little division. This is called the central sulcus, sulcus meaning the groove within the brain, that divides both hemispheres. So this lets me know, for example, that the frontal lobe is in front of this sulcus and the parietal lobe will be in back of this sulcus. Okay? Or I look at this structure. Okay? This is the lateral sulcus, right? the one that runs right by the ear. And this lets me know where our temporal lobe is. Right, so you're kind of getting that idea that a lot of the lobes have these big divisions and grooves that really help define the boundaries of specific lobes. We don't really see that with the occipital lobe. We might have a little sulcus up here, one little notch down here, a sulcus that goes through there. But essentially what we're doing is kind of using our imagination, knowing that the occipital lobe runs in the back of the head. Right, so what do we know? As I just stated, the occipital lobe is in the back of our brain. And because we have two hemispheres, we have one in our left hemisphere and one in the back of our right hemisphere. You could also think about it that it's right above our cerebellum. That lets us know that it's in the back of the head as well. Now, what else should we talk about? The primary region within the occipital lobe, and this will be a big focus of today, is a region called the visual cortex. Okay, the visual cortex. In fact, let's label that down here. Visual cortex. It's like you can't talk about one without the other, right? You talk about the occipital lobe, you've got to talk about the visual cortex. And this region helps us process visual information, right? So everything you see right now, me, the board, is being processed by this region. So as we talk about the occipital lobe today in this video, we're also going to be identifying and talking about the visual cortex, all right? So where should we start? How does information actually reach the brain? And then what do we do with it? Well, we're gonna kind of divide this into two different functions and then sub areas. Let's start with the first one. So the first function is that the occipital lobe and of course visual cortex helps detecting visual stimuli. Okay, detecting visual stimuli. So how can we visualize this? Well, imagine that we're looking at an apple, right? The light waves are bouncing off. This will eventually reach, we know this region, the retina, which is in the back of the eye. And this is where the light wave is going to convert to electrical signals via transduction. And that electrical signal is going to travel up through the optic nerve to the thalamus. We talk about that in a different video. Specifically, the lateral geniculate nucleus. And from there, there's going to be a direct pathway to our occipital lobe, okay? And we're specifically the back of the occipital lobe, which is our visual cortex, okay? So this is kind of the pathway of vision. Now, we can divide this detected visual stimuli into two things. In other words, once the signal hits the visual cortex, what happens? Let's think about this. The first thing is what we're going to label as conscious awareness. Now, I want you to think about this. When everything hits our cortex, we become consciously aware of it. Now, you don't know you're actually looking at an apple just yet. All you know is that there's something in our visual field. Well, how do we know that? The moment something enters your visual field, all of the neurons within the cortex start to fire. Right? So you don't know what you're looking at, but you know something's there. Another way to think about it is after you consciously uh, are aware of it, is you start to process the visual stimuli. 
So start to process the visual stimuli. Okay? So what does that mean? Well, you don't see an apple, but you do see a few things. The neurons within the visual cortex are going to help make you aware of a few things. For example, you will be able to make out the size of the object. These neurons are going to help make out the shape or form of the object. It might help make out if there's any motion, right? Is the object moving? And of course, the color, right? So at this stage, all we know is that something is in front of us in our visual field and that we have some sort of form or, or, or identification of this image. Size, shape, color, and motion. And I thought I would share this. We're not going to talk about this extensively, but there's a lot of good research that deals with kind of this initial stage of processing. And this research was done by Hubel, Hubel and Weasel. Okay, Hubel and Weasel. And their research, which they won the Nobel Prize for, was on these specialized neurons within the visual cortex, right? They kind of helped us map out what the visual cortex does. So for example, they put you know, these electrodes within this cat's brain. They were able to isolate these individual neurons and find that every neuron has a specialty, right? So in other words, they discover this idea of you know, specialized neurons. Just to give you a little kind of taste of what their study was about. They'd have a, you know, a cat look at, let's say, I don't know, like a line like this, okay? And that line would spark all these action potentials. So these lines represent action potentials, like all this firing of neurons. But then if you turn the line just a little bit this way, you might have just some firing of action potentials, right? A few. And then if you turn it completely horizontal, you have nothing, right? In other words, as the cat is looking at these angles, specific neurons only fire when the specific angle or shape or, or something's moving or not moving. So these are called specialized neurons, simple and complex neurons. So this is some research you can think about that deals with this. Okay, so after we detect the visual stimuli, what's next? Well, we have to recognize the object. Why? We are recognizing, recognizing the visual stimuli. Visual stimuli. So we know it's there, right? We've started to process the form, the size, the shape. Now we get to identify what it actually is. And what we're doing is we're starting to match that visual stimuli to something already in our mind. So even though you're not saying this out loud, what you really do is you're saying to yourself, have I seen this before? Right? That's essentially if your brain could talk, what it's saying. Now, how does it do that? What it does, and this is more of a hypothesis, is that there are some pathways in the brain that lead to other regions that help you figure it out. Let's think about this. So here's kind of one of the big hypotheses, is that after information reaches the back of the cortex, right, this would be the primary visual cortex, this is going to send information out of the cortex to other regions. And here are the two pathways. One of the pathways leads to our temporal lobe. Okay? This is considered the ventral uh, stream. You could also call this, people call this the what pathway. And the reason they call it that is because this is the area of the brain that lets you identify the object, right? This is all about identification. You know, what is this that I'm looking at? Identification. You know, what am I looking at? Right? You may think, why this region? Well, this is our medial temporal lobe. That's where memories, long-term memories, are processed and possibly stored. So that is why this is the what pathway. We also have the dorsal pathway that leads to our parietal lobe. Okay? So it kind of leads up here. Okay? And instead of the what pathway, you know, this is often called the, the where pathway. Okay? Why is it called the where pathway? Because it, instead of identifying objects, we're identifying, let's say, the location of objects, right? Where they are in space, right? So more spatial things, right? So these pathways are essentially let us know what it is I'm looking at. I'm connecting it to past memories. I'm knowing how far away it is from me. This is kind of the, the second part of it, okay? So this is essentially a nice visual for how we take in information, we're aware of it, and then we recognize and identify it. Now, here's a question for you. What if there's damage to the brain, right? What if there's some sort of lesion 
right, in the area of the brain because of a stroke or a traumatic brain injury, what could possibly happen? Let's kind of go right here. The, the primary issue, right, is we can see the, 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 see the object, but we don't really recognize the object. And what this is called, if there's damage, is visual agnosia, okay, or visual agnosia, okay? Essentially what happens is, is that you can see an object from a sensory level, right? You see the, the, the light waves on your eye, the, the light has converted to electricity. You can process the information, but your brain can't identify it, okay? This is visual agnosia, okay? And a subcategory of that, which is even more interesting, is called prosopagnosia. Prosopagnosia. So what is this? Well, first, let's kind of, you know, visualize what visual agnosia is, which is you have per perception, right? Think of this like in a circle, and then you have a circle around it, right? There's no perception, right? You have sensation, but no perception. Prosopagnosia is what we call, I'll use a different marker for this, facial blindness. And what this means, similar to our visual agnosia, is that you can identify features of faces maybe, you can take in information, but you don't know who people are. And it's kind of a bizarre thing to think about, but you might look at five strangers and you don't know who they are. You can process features, but you're not really recognizing who they are. You might be talking to a loved one. You even, very rarely, might not be able to recognize yourself in the mirror. And that is an amazing uh, uh, a thing that could happen with damage to the brain. And it's important to know, this is a damage to the eye, parts of the corneal lens retina, this only occurs with damage to the occipital lobe. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I really hope you learned something. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, comment below, and hit the like button. I'll see you next time.